What is going on everybody? Welcome back to our channel. You are watching series Getting Easy with Apache Airflow. This is the video in which we are be talking about macros. Quick highlights on what we will be talking about is what on earth are macros and why do we need them? How Airflow uses macros under the hood? Why Jinja templating? We'll show you how to use existing Airflow macros and some of the best practices. Then we will show you how you can write your custom macros within the DAG as well as across the multiple DAGs via plugins. So let's get started. To demonstrate the need of macros, we will start by looking at our own data ingestion pipeline DAG that we built in our last video. For those of you who are completely new to Airflow and don't know how to write the DAG, I would highly recommend you to watch our previous video. Otherwise, just follow along in this video. We're going to give you a quick recap of that. So we had two tasks. First, that loads the data from raw storage and does the transformation bits, including merging and cleaning. And the second task takes the process data and loads it into the relational database. Looking at the preview of our web UI, this tag booking ingestion is set for an hourly schedule. So each vertical line on the block you see are representing one hour of period, starting from the 10th minute of every hour. You will see several times if you hover over the each execution block. The start time indicates when your DAG was actually started. Whereas the run time is the execution time, which as you can see is always one period behind the start time. As an example, this DAG run, which started at 2310, is going to ingest the records from the last hour, from 22nd hour 10th minute till the 23rd hour 10th minute. Now the main question is, how do the tasks which are running inside the DAG gets to know about this execution date? Because looking at inside the DAG code, we can't tell what is the execution type of this block from inside the code. And the only way to do that is by using Airflow macros. So Airflow macros are some bunch of variables that you can use within your DAG code, which provides the context of Airflow. As an example, so this DS means the execution date, which is going to tell you exactly the run date of this DAG. And similarly, you have this available in different formats. You can figure out what is the next execution time and also the yesterday's execution time. And similarly, we have a bunch of other parameters that we can use. So previously, we were simply picking up this booking.csv file, which had like bunch of dates in it. Even if you are receiving the data from third party or your own in-house service, you have to organize this in a timely based manner. What I mean by that is if you have to ingest your data in an hourly manner, then you have to tell your clients, whoever are throwing the data in this draw bucket, to please provide us the data in an hourly manner. As an example, the data in raw storage will look something like this. So we will have date directories, inside which we will have our directories. And the CSV of that will gonna contain the data of that specific hour for that day. This not only will gonna make your life easier to ingest the data from Airflow, but also is a best practice when you're loading and viewing this kind of big datas in databases like Snowflake or Athena or Cassandra, because those big data databases treat these directories as partitions. More on that later. So now that we have data coming in this manner, let's apply the changings in the DAG to use the Airflow macros. So while calling the function transform data, we need to tell this function that what is the date range of this data. So we are going to give the execution time as an argument to this function for this Python operator. To pass in any arguments to the Python operator, all you have to do is provide arguments by op args and then mention your arguments in a list. So what we need to give here is, so this is a macro variable which will be rendered as an execution time by Airflow before running this tag. One more thing to note is that you cannot use these macros everywhere. Only specific arguments of the operators support templating. You can view the documents of the operator that you are using. So you can provide the templates like this. Now, is this enough? Because this only provides you the execution date, but our data is being ingested in hourly manner. So we need an hour information as well. There are certain ways of doing it. Either you can provide uh, TS, which is an execution date in ISO format, which includes the date and hour, minutes and seconds. Or the other way is you can also use the execution date, which is an instance of pendulum. So we say execution date dot hour. Now in our transform function, what we will do is convert this string, which is coming in as year, month and date hour to date and time format. And then we will pick up the booking.csv file from that specific folder. 
and then we are doing some transformation cleaning and merging stuff and then we are loading the data in a specific date and time format directories and then in the second task where we are picking the data from the process storage and loading into relational ingestion database we are also going to give the same operation arguments as we did for the first one so we pick the processed file from the specific file location and then we are simply loading it into the database. So let us run this and see how the data looks like. Oh, before running, you have to make sure that the data for that specific time and hour is available. I have added yesterday's and today's raw data into the raw data storage. And now let's see how Airflow ingests this data based on the macros. Since we manually triggered this tag, so you can see the execution date is 19th of August and the hour is 21st, but the minutes are 43 instead of the 10th minute because we manually executed this tag. So which is fine, we just need an hour information. So if you look at the logs of this tag run, you will see it starts ingesting the data for the following date. So this is the date that we gave to this tag through macros variable ds. And this is an hour information, which is execution date dot hour. As you can see, I'm printing this information over here. Ingesting tag for date, execution date. And execution date is given to this function as follows. ds and the execution date dot hour. Now let's say if you want a certain value which is not available in the already existing Airflow macros. So in that case, you can write your own custom macros. So there are two ways. One is you write the custom macros in the DAG itself. So it will be visible only to that specific tag. To do that, you have to define a specific argument in the DAG definition as user defined macros, which takes a dictionary object as uh, you define in any macros you want. So let's say your DAG needs a millisecond value of the execution date. So maybe you can call it something like date to millis. Provide it your own custom function, let's say, so execution dates to milli takes the execution date and it provides us the epoch milliseconds from that execution date. Now this function becomes your custom macros. To use this, you simply have to mention this in your operator arguments. Date to millis and the argument that it takes is the ds itself, which is the execution date. Now let's see what it prints it over here in the execution date. And we clear this existing DAG run, which is going to re-trigger this run. Yep, it is expected to fail. Let's see the logs. As you can see, ingesting data for date. So this is the epoch milliseconds that we got. So it looks like this is the value that we got from our custom macros. And yeah, of course the DAG will fail because it's trying to convert this into a date time format. Now, if you want this macro to be visible to other DAGs as well, you have to provide this macro as part of the plugins. To do that, simply create a new file in the plugins directory as Create your own custom class that needs to inherit from the Airflow plugins class and name it as custom macros. And in here, you need to specify your macros. It takes the list of functions. So in this case, we are going to give it the same function as we provided here. And yeah, that's it. To verify this, you can go into one of the Airflow running container and run the following command. Airflow plugins. You can see we have a custom plugin named as custom macros and it's located in this folder and it has the following function. Now, in order to use this plugin, all you have to do is in your main code, you have to provide in a Jinja template value as follows. Macros dot the name of your custom macros, which is custom plugins, and then the name of the function, which takes in the date as the execution date. Now let's see and verify if this works. We again clear this task and view the logs. Yep, it did indeed. So with that, we are done with this video. I hope it was informative for you. And if you liked it and it was helpful to you, please don't forget to thumbs up, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And if you are new to this channel, I will highly recommend you to subscribe us. This is going to keep us motivated to bring this useful stuff to you guys in the future. So I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.